Let's take a look at creating a WinForms GUI for your PowerShell script. So before we get started, this is the script I'll be using as a demo for creating a GUI on. Uh, so all this does, and I can demonstrate it for you, is it prompts for a directory, and then if that directory exists, it removes it. So in this case, the output that first true uh, means that it did exist, that false, that false means that it was removed. So the only prerequisite to be able to use WinForms is that we load the assembly into your PowerShell session. So here's the code to do that. And if you have any scripts that use WinForms, you want to make sure that this is at the top of the script. And then to create a basic form, it's really simple. We create a, a form object using the new object commandlet and giving it the name of system.windows.forms.form. And then on that form, it has a show dialog method, and that's what actually gets it to display. So if I run these two lines, we now get a really basic form with absolutely nothing in it. And that's because we haven't added anything to it. So let's add something to it. So we'll start with the text box since we need to have a way to uh, get that location. Uh, so we've, we're creating the form here on line 42 and on 43 here, uh, we'll be creating that text box. So we're using the new object and giving it the name of system.windows.forms.textbox. And of course, signing that to the text box variable. And then to get that text box to show on the form, we, we need to give it a location. So this is the x, y coordinates of where it lands on the form. And that's calculated from the top left-hand corner. So 23, 23 will be 23 over and 23 down from the top corner. And then we can give it a custom size or leave the default. Here I'm choosing to give it a custom size of 150 uh, wide by 23 tall. And then to actually add that text box to the form, on the form object, we use the dot controls dot add method and give it the, the uh, that text box object. And of course, we'll show dialog. So if we run this, we now get a form with an text box. So you can see, I can type in the text box. Cool, but I mean, there's nothing else on there. Uh, let's add a button to it. So here, um, oh, and before I go any further, um, on each of these steps, I'll have a section called reused code. So this this is all the stuff that was from before. So this is the text box that we added in just earlier. Um, I'm just hiding it because we've already gone over it. So to create a button, we use the new object commandlet again, but on the but we use the forms dot button, and then I'm gonna assign this to the select button since I'm gonna call this button select. And then to set the, the text that displays on top of the button, we set the dot text property. So I'm setting that to select here on line 67. And then of course, giving it a location. So 196, 23. So that's 196 over 23 down. And then I'm adding it to the form using the same dot controls dot add method, but of course, giving it the name of the button. So now we will run through and run all of that code. And now we get a form with a text box and a button. But if I click on the button, nothing actually happens because we haven't assigned any action to it. So let's try adding an action to that button. So again, got the reused code. It's all the stuff from the last two steps. So what I'm creating here, this object is a folder browser dialog. And what that is, and I'm sure it'll look familiar to you when it, when it launches, um, but it's just the dialog for selecting a folder. So instead of having someone type something in, I'm just going this route because it's a little more user friendly. So I'm creating that folder browser object using the new object commandlet. And then on the button, so I've got select button here again, to add an action for when it's clicked, I use the dot add underscore clicked, and then use the open parens and open curly. So the curly brackets are there because it's a script block. So I'm setting the folder browser to show its dialog. And then once that is closed, it will set the path text box dot text. So the text inside of our text box, it will set that to be whatever folder was selected in the folder browser. So I've got the folder browser dot selected path here. And since we're also using the folder browser, I'm going to set the path text box to be read only. So it can't be uh, directly edited. So we can run through that. And so now we have a text box that is read only. We can't type in it. 
And then if we hit the select button, we now get the folder browser dialog. And so if I select a folder here, so I'm gonna select the remove me folder, it now adds that path here. So I can go to the end of it, see, yep, yeah, now yeah, that's my, that's the folder I selected. Cool, so now we need a button that will run the script. So let's add a remove button. So again, creating the button, same way I did before, setting the location, and then setting the text to remove, and then the add click action, so whenever it's clicked, I'm setting it to be uh, this code right here. So if the folder browser has a selected path, so if that path has already been selected, and if that path actually exists, so using the test path, then I'm going to remove it. And then of course, I will add that control, add the remove button to the form using the form.controls.add again, and then show dialog on the form. So go ahead and run all of that, including the code from before. So now we should be able to select the folder the same way as before. So there it shows up in the text box. We can see that it's there. It's that same folder. And then if we hit remove, that folder should be gone. Yep. So it did run that code that we wanted it to. So I can close out of that. And, and so there are a couple of other things you can do to a form um, that is pretty standard. So there are a couple of other standard things you can add to a form. Uh, the OK and Cancel button on what every single form in Windows ever. Uh, so we'll create bo both of those. So I've got the OK, I've got the Cancel, setting the text to OK, giving it a location, uh, setting the text on the Cancel to Cancel, giving that a location. And one thing to mention on the location is typically these will be actually calculated out. Um, so you can, if you want to put it in the center, you can divide the width of the form by two and then put it in the center that way. I've just for the sake of this ease of demonstration, I've just got the straight numbers here. Uh, but the form actually has uh, properties for the accept button. So that's the OK button and for the cancel button. So I'm creating the OK button and setting it as the accept button. And then the cancel button I'm setting as the cancel button. And then of course I'm adding those controls to the form using the form.controls.add. And then the last thing I'm gonna do here is set the folder forms text to be folder form. And what that'll do is that'll set the title. Uh, but you don't have to believe me here, we'll, we'll, then we'll demonstrate it. So there, so now we have an okay, we have a cancel, we have a title. Um, and then of course we can go through and run through it again. We already know it works. But if we hit cancel here, it actually will uh, close the form. So that's how you create a GUI using WinForms for your PowerShell script. And the last thing I wanna mention is here at the end of it, I've got the whole script written out and spaced out nicely. Uh, so if you if you grab the the .ps1 file that's attached to this snip, you can actually go through and play with it. it. Makes it a little easier instead of having to cut and paste it from elsewhere.